Hi everyone, this is Venkat from Edina. We are a, a media portal from Karnataka and from Bangalore. Um, we aggregate community voices and that's how we look at journalism being a place where we can aggregate people's voices. We also do surveys beyond the elections to understand people's pulses and we then convert that into news and bring it to people. Right? These are early days. We would like people to support, like, subscribe and support us even financially. We'll also want to take this opportunity to say that there are many media organizations which are non-corporate, which are doing a fabulous job. Please do like, subscribe and support them wherever you think you connect to them. All right. Thank you so much for that. Now, I would like to say that yesterday Ravish mentioned that media houses, especially corporate houses, are not just been bad for Indian democracy, but have been a severe dent into humanity itself. And in that regard, uh, we all have understood in 10 years that the right wing has strong financial tentacles. Uh, it has it has supported the corporate, it has support of the media houses, and it is quite entrenched. It's not just in legislative and political power, it's deeply entrenched. But it was Kunal's book which made us realize that maybe it's even deeper. It has a cultural signature to it. The day-to-day -day hate is also embodied in some sort of a cultural interaction which is happening between people. Uh, if it, it has been orchestrated, now it's getting embedded. And in that regard, politics to a for of right wing and the I fight it is much more than voting in elections. So it's a, it's a privilege to have somebody like Kulan, who is a film podcaster, journalist, to talk to us about elections and beyond. So thank you, Kunal, for joining Idina again. And it's uh, amazing to have you and looking forward to discussing with you both the elections and a little bit uh, looking ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Venkat. Thank you for having me here. Always a pleasure to be a part of uh, anything that Idina does. Yeah. So the first question to you is, what are your reactions to the election results? I mean, look, so as a journalist, uh, you know, with 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 uh, with my ears to the ground, I, I must say that I wasn't I wasn't as shocked as a lot of other people are. I wasn't entirely very surprised at how things turned out. Uh, I, you know, my 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 own estimation missed the elections by a few seats where I had basically assumed that the BJP would be around 270 or so. Um, but, you know, but but the BJP fell fell way short of that mark as well. Um, I was surprised at what happened in UP, uh, although although I must say that, you know, the, the people that I spoke to, the networks that I've had, they kept sending me feedback that pointed to what the result finally was, you know, which was that there was deep anger and distress among people. Uh, so in that sense, you know, it was it was not entirely very surprising, but I think I think the extent of the loss is is what uh, is is what I found to be, you know, somewhat of a surprise because I would assume that after everything that the BJP put into the campaign, uh, they should have been able to get closer to the to the to the halfway mark, right? Um, so, so it's you know that bit for me is is the most refreshing part of the elections, Anand. Um, you know, which is the fact that despite all, all of you know the effort, all of the money, all of the institutional capture and the backing that the BJP uh, you know sort of threw in for the election, right? Right, right from abusing every institution there is. Uh, from the different agencies to the media to the to the election commission of india uh, you know from from being able to create this absolute disinformation you know sort of uh, ecosystem around around the bjp and around the narratives that it was constantly seeking to project despite all of these efforts it is it has been refreshing to see that the people of india have actually stood up to all of these efforts uh, and have refused to buy into the BJP's rhetoric and its campaign, right? Um, the, the fact that the, the prime minister himself led from the front when it came to uh, falsehoods, when it came to absolutely communally charged rhetoric aimed against Muslims and other religious minorities, um, the fact that he, he chose to, you know, call himself nothing less than a god uh, and, you know, chose to call himself a man who was sent by God, to perform a certain duty, um, you know the fact that he he constantly painted himself to be above everyone else, uh, despite all of this this personality cult that for the ten years we've seen the BJP very consciously develop around uh, Modi, the fact is that the people of India saw through all of this. They saw through the lies. They saw through the bullshit, 
And that is what is the most refreshing part of these elections to me. Um, you know, so at the end of the day, uh, a lot may not really change. And we'll talk a bit more about this. You know, in terms of actual things on the ground, we've already seen that not too much has really changed. But what has what has what has happened in these elections and what must be celebrated is that these elections have shattered this this aura and this myth around the prime minister, right? The myth that he's 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 above everyone else, that he towers above everyone else, uh, that he's he's almost this divine godly figure. Uh, that he cares only and only for the country and, and not for anybody else. You know, all of the things that the prime minister and his and and his 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 people around him were trying to cultivate for the prime minister, that that image has been absolutely shattered because what the elections revealed was a prime minister who was who was, to be very honest, who was willing to stoop to any lengths uh, to be able to just come back to power, who was willing to pit one community against the other so that he could win more votes, right? Who was willing to jeopardize the existence of a community in a country that he wants to wants to govern for at least five more years. He was willing to, you know, allow that to happen. He was willing to allow communities to hate each other only and only so that he could stay in power. And, and I think, I think, the fact that people didn't buy into it is 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 a victory in itself. Right? Um, so it's 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 an extremely positive sign for Indian democracy that that people refuse to be uh, you know sort of compromised by this rhetoric and they refuse to buy into it. Yeah, I, I, actually, one of my uh, nephews had asked me why do I think this election is interesting. I was saying that he had not seen Lagan; he had seen much later. I said like Lagan. Bhuvan was all by himself. He was fighting a very difficult battle. And if you, if I said that if you have seen the film, you would have seen that even the villagers were helping make the pads. They did not even have pads. So it looked like the people were coming together. Uh, communities had come one and a half years before. And they were not just emotionally connected. I saw them strategically connected. They knew where to fight, how to fight, what narratives to choose. I think the call that it should be a local issue was a people's call. And all the campaigns played in enormous role do you agree that this this was between the people and the rest and not just political party do you uh, agree to that, that view i think to a certain extent yes because uh, look what has happened is there's no denying that the opposition you know even if it's hamstrung by by everything we know uh, you know by institutional abuse by by the fact that they were being targeted by different uh, bodies and agencies Despite everything, um, you know, the fact is that the the opposition to a very large extent had failed in playing the role of an active opposition on the ground. You know, it what that means is being on the ground with people, being able to mobilize and campaign on people's issues through the five years and not just before the elections. Uh, you know, so so to a large extent, they had failed in that duty. Um, but but and yet I think during the elections, what happened is. I think somewhere people took it up upon themselves as well, right? They didn't. They didn't wait for the opposition to to sort of get it act, get its act together. Uh, they they came together in their own ways. And I know so many different citizen groups uh, in Maharashtra, for instance, where I'm sitting. Uh, you know, citizens collectives and groups who decided to go campaigning for the India Alliance uh, in different parts of the state. Uh, you know, through the heat wave through various difficult conditions, going to the ground and, and having no resources at all. Uh, you know, so it's not like the India Alliance was paying these guys to be doing this, but they were just forming smaller teams within themselves and, and going to difficult areas and terrains. Some would go into tribal areas, some would go to hilly areas and mountains and meet smaller communities. So, you know, this kind of mobilization by the people, not really waiting to see whether the opposition was able to do it themselves or no, is I think is I think a very refreshing um, sort of development for the for for the democracy because in a sense this is this is by the people right and this is for the yeah, people yeah, right. uh, this is in itself what democracy is um, so so that part was very very heartwarming for me. Yeah. Uh, I want to get your views on Maharashtra as an outsider. Um, I felt that news was coming that uh, the whole idea of watching machine like changing parties will be punished. It looked like Shiv Shena of Uddhav Thakri was slightly ahead uh, and Congress was even taking the third seat. But it looks like 
it's been quite different. Shinde's Shiv Sena has not been that badly damaged. Uh, Uddhav has not performed as well. And in some sense, it is NCP of, uh, of, uh, uh, of the breakaway NCP, or which has retained NCP, uh, of Ajit Pawar has actually taken the biggest now. So how do you read it? Uh, and maybe even connect it back to the assembly, or we can talk about it later. How do you so, read that? So Venkat, I mean, you know, in my travel, and I traveled primarily in the Vidhar region, which is actually, you know, known to be the BJP stronghold. Uh, you know, even before the BJP came to power, the BJP would 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 be considered, uh, you know, because Nagpur also falls under Vidhar, uh, because of the traditional influence of Nagpur-based BJP leaders like Gadkari and now Fadnavis, uh, and the fact that, of course, you know, the RSS is headquartered there. Vidhar has always been very special for the BJP. Uh, and yet, this time, when I traveled, I could see a very clear outpouring of anger against the BJP, right? So what happened was, uh, you know, the BJP had focused on Vidar because Vidar was also a very vulnerable part of the state. Uh, remember that this is also the region where there have been, you know, thousands and thousands of farmers who killed themselves uh, because of the agrarian distress. So, you know, these farmers had seen the Congress rule, had seen um, Sharad Pawar becoming the agriculture minister and, and things not really changing for them. Uh, and they had voted very decisively in favor of the BJP starting 2014. Um, and yet, you know, this time, a number of factors came together. One is the fact that, um, you know, we've seen in Maharashtra this politics that, that the BJP has really championed, which is that, you know, it's broken away the Shiv Sena and then it's broken away the NCP. It's created fragments of, of both of these parties. And then, you know, the election commission has very dubiously decided to give these parties the breakaway segments uh, without the founders, you know. So the founders have remained in the older parties, but the breakaway segments have gotten the party name as well as the party symbols, right? So it's it's been a very dubious affair. And, and, and on the ground, many started seeing this, this sort of, you know, the fact that the election commission would do something like this as an extension of the BJP's overreach. Right, so the, the 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 misuse of the agencies uh, got strangely connected, you know, by by this by this fact that the agencies and by the election commission also delivering such surprise verdicts. So there was an there was a sense of anger because look, Maharashtra doesn't have this this you know sort of IRAM Gayaram brand of politics, which is that dissidents keep coming in and going out. But in the last three four years, we've seen this the, the rise in this kind of politics, and we've seen. The BJP actually taking a, a lot of pride in 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 doing this, right? Fadnavis has gone on record and said, "Oh, I, I've you know I've broken these parties away." Uh, other people in the BJP have also gone on record to say that they've they've engineered these splits. So I think there was a sense of disillusionment and anger among people, uh, also among farmers, especially because you know we've I mean it would be surprising, Venka, to a lot of people uh, who are listening to this. But when I would go to villages in Vidhar, you know, thousands and thousands of kilometers away from Delhi, they would tell me how when the farmers were protesting on the borders of Delhi, they would receive a lot of social media content which spoke about how farmers were treat, being, being, being treated very badly by the BJP government, right? Uh, it, by, by the center especially and how Modi had refused to engage with them. Uh, the BJP was calling them names, you know, they were being lati charged and so on. And the fact that so many farmers died in, in the weather conditions that they were in for a year when they were sitting at the borders of. So somewhere all of this rhetoric also came back and, and farmers especially were very unhappy with how things had shaped. Uh, plus the, the conditions in Maharashtra itself, where we are seeing that the farmer suicides and I had reported for Al Jazeera, how actually the, the number of farmers who killed themselves under Modi in the last 10 years was actually more than the number of farmers who had killed themselves under Manmohan Singh, right? So farmer suicide has had actually gone up, but the conversation around it was missing. Uh, if you remember during Manmohan Singh, the issue used to be so pertinent that the PM was, you know, was forced to come down. He was supposed to take, he was, he, he took a two or three day visit to Vidhar where he met farmers. But Modi hasn't done that, right? So, and then the conversation has gone missing from the media as well. So I think all of these factors came together and, and gave the BJP a very resounding, um, you know, sense of reality check when it came to Maharashtra. Okay. 
yeah so i from there maybe i would like to look ahead in some sense i think it's the people movement we agreed that that's played a role uh, we also know that the non corporate media including the influencers um, and independent thinkers have played an important role um in some sense that period is over we 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 there is a uh, that there is a damage or there is at least a belief that modi is not invincible that thing is happened but you have pointed out in your book um, uh, very that there is the day to day hate and 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 we are going to going back to that sort of day to day hate uh, you know module again right the elections are over the peak emotions watching television working towards that is over we gone into a more secular period like a secular period there's no more war there's a peace period now and the day to day hate really works and your book very clearly indicates that it's deeply entrenched there is a cultural integration of that right so where do you see uh, the politics moving uh, because we have a stronger opposition and then how do you think it will manifest itself in social media and in people's life so kind of three different things but if you can take each of them and explain to us where do you think we are heading towards it Well, so you know, Venkat, one of the things that, unfortunately, um, you know, in some liberal spaces, the analysis of the election has been, is that it is a defeat of communalism, that it's it's a you know it's a verdict against the politics of hate, and and I would say it's absolutely not, right? I would I would I would urge people to not look at it that way because I think that would be a, a rather innocent and a rather sort of you know. Um, i mean i i would say i would say a rather innocent way of looking at it look uh, some hard facts here first right so in terms of the total number of votes that the bjp got the bjp actually got more number of votes this time than it got the previous time in 2019 right from 20, 22.8 or 9 crore votes last time to about 23.5 or 6 crore votes this time so they've got more votes in terms of the num- in terms of its vote share it has gone down only by about 6 0.6 or or you know half a percent or so not even a full percent um so in terms of its its sort of popularity on the ground we don't necessarily see that there's a big drive away from the bjp because it has indulged in 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 hindutva politics right um if if people were so disgusted and and so upset with the prime minister spewing all of that communal rhetoric we should have seen a major exodus away from the bjp we have not seen that uh, what we've seen of course is is very very clever you know political arithmetic playing out in some places uh, what we've seen is con- consolidation of votes playing out in some places like maharashtra uh, like in up to bring the bjp down electorally right so electorally yes we're seeing the bjp facing a setback but that doesn't mean that communalism is 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 going to face a similar setback because look i mean you know you've read the book and i've i've mentioned this in the book as well that communalism as a project the hindu right wing sees it as a cultural project as a social project not necessarily as an electoral project so you know while it may sometimes benefit the bjp electorally that's that's not the that's not the ultimate aim of the project the ultimate aim is a complete reorientation of how we conceive ourselves to be and and how we perceive our our, our society to be and our our future to be right so so that is the aim i mean you know they're looking at creating a hindu a consolidated hindu identity for our country uh, and that doesn't necessarily depend on on the bjp being in power i mean of course it helps the project immensely if the bjp is in power but but what the bjp has so cleverly done and what the hindu right wing has broadly done is that it's created an entire ecosystem uh, which is going to ensure that that ideological project continues in the background uh, look because communalism now as a result of this ecosystem has become an an everyday affair right it's it's almost like this music playing in the background it it doesn't necessarily need anyone to do anything it's always going to continue playing um and and let me give you an example of this i mean you know once the election dust was settled uh, i'm i'm in i'm in a lot of you know groups which are run by bjp sympathizers and where you know the hindu right wing often sort of exchanges notes and within these groups you could see an actual upsurge of anti muslim content because now there was anger around the fact that muslims had chosen to vote against uh, against the bjp in such large numbers 
you know the fact that the muslims had come out in 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 places where they were in in decent numbers and in place in those seats you know the elections had gone against the bjp we've seen this kind of sentiment being developed within those spaces right to say that look this is the this is what you get for even trying to help the muslims out they will never work for you they will never do anything for you so it's better that we shun them that we ostracize them that we boycott them because this is what they are going to do right so there's that sentiment that has been constantly fanned by by all of these spaces uh, you also see that being being spouted by bjp led leaders for instance here in in mumbai we have a former mp by the name of kirit somaiya who has been going around and alleging that there was a vote jihad a quote unquote vote jihad against the bjp um you know you've got mps in in places like bihar who are saying that because because the muslims didn't vote for me and the yadavs didn't vote for me i am not going to work for them right uh, so we are seeing that there is there is going to be this consolidation of anger against the muslims and and that is going to continue because i think what communalism over the years over the last 10 years especially has done is that it has created this very sort of normalized sense that you can attack muslims that you can dehumanize them on a day to day basis without it ever being noticeable out in the open right so you can do this on whatsapp groups you can listen to music which is dehumanizing muslims uh, you can read books you can listen to poetry which dehumanizes muslims all of which i have covered in my book h pop uh, so that is where communalism stands it doesn't necessarily need the prime minister to make statements the, of the kinds that it he has made uh, and i think that is where we sometimes confuse the verdict with communal with the communal project because the hindutva project will continue nonetheless right um, that politics will continue that is not going to stop because one election didn't go their way uh, in the manner that that we expected them to so i think i think it's important to remember that you know the politics of hate is not going to go away it's it's here to stay uh it is it might just also get stronger because as i said now there is this very clear sense that muslims are are you know very openly voting against the bjp uh so why do we even care to you know have the curtsies now right let's get into action mode let's let's try and double down on the rhetoric against them so we might also see that uh i just want to quickly add one thing before i i lob it back to you which is that the one place where the hindutva project has suffered a setback is the fact that um you know the, the 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 idea that you know all of us have to basically dismiss and and do away with our with our multiple identities right um that all of our identities have to basically merge into one identity which is that we are all hindus first and everything else later right so so be it the 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 young person who's not able to get a job be it the farmer be it someone you know who's an obc be it a tribal person all of all of our identities have to be reduced to us just being a hindu uh, that is the that is the idea of the hindutva project and i think what these elections have done is is actually created a dent in that project in that part of the project yeah, yeah. which is that the farmer has come out and said no you know what my my issues in the farm are important the the young guy who can't find a job has come out and said you know what my issue of i uh, am uh, unemployment is important uh, the 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 sts the scs have come out and said you know what a constitution is important um you know different caste groups have come out and said you know my caste group is important and what you're doing to us is important so i think it's it's reclaiming our identities back from the hindutva project which is for me the most uh, you know the most heartening part of it and which is where the the hindutva project has has really suffered a setback it's not the fact that politics of hate will stop it is that they are now going to be having to try harder to create a, 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 a you know sort of this this overarching hindu identity uh, is is where is where you know sort of the victory is in some ways yeah it reminded me after the in the evening of the of the election when the results came out a friend of mine who is a is very much a practicing hindu and he is a hanuman bhakt in many ways uh, he called up and he was uh, literally in tears he said venkat for 10 years or especially in the last 5 years i have not been able to tell people that i am a hanuman bhakt because uh, somehow it looked like he has become muscular he has become very different than what i imagined him for me he is a very different imagination that's how i teach my daughter 
So I am very happy that I'm, I'm, I, I now can reclaim him back in some ways. He said that. Uh, and I remember what my teacher had told me, ki, Venkat Ram Nirgun bhi hai, Sagun bhi hai. Dono ka Ram mm-hmm. hamare desh mein hai. Tulsi Absolutely. Saas ke bhi hai, Kabir ke bhi hai. Right? Like, I think that somewhere we've, we're able to mm-hmm. navigate that part uh, is, is, is a good thing. But I, I hear you. I hear you and hence want to understand from you a little bit more. Uh, I think we understand the financial corrupt nature of BJP perhaps a little bit more. And I think that's what people have responded to. Perhaps even Tana Shah, dictator, one directional thinking, only one way of thinking, my way or highway and, and the over publicity. But I think we have not perhaps understood what you're calling the day to day hate, the functioning at a day to day level, which is cultural, which is day-to-day discussion, whether it's the Muslim perhaps understands it very well or minorities understand it very well, but in other places, it's it's not well understood. So uh, how, if people movements have taken this idea of bringing people's issues, ag- aggregating people's issues, the we farmers protest, CAA citizenship, the cultural uh, dismantling of the of the hate politics requires, does it require a different mechanism how does one go about doing it? Because uh, we might go back and say we've we've won it, like we have we have dismantled this. We might feel, but it's not true. You're saying, how does one think about this cultural one? Because it's much more subtle. It's day to day. The effort is not going and doing a protest. The effort is something else. How does one build it? Can we orchestrate it? Can we build it from ground up? How does one think about the whole thing? Look, I think Venkat, there are multiple parts to it, right? Um, one of the parts that this this election did so beautifully uh, is to actually remind people of the issues that matter, right? Is to is to actually bring people's attentions back from you know from these issues of the fact that Muslims are your enemies, that this is an existential threat, to the fact that you are actually living face to face with an, with an existential threat, which is sometimes hunger, which is sometimes um, unemployment, you know, which is the fact that you're not able to earn enough to feed your family well, which is poor education, poor healthcare. All of these are issues that matter. And and I think these elections have been able to do that. They've been able to drag people's attention back to those issues. Uh, So I think one must one must continue to work on 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 this. Uh, And I hope that civil society continues to do this, which is to mobilize people um and you know and and remind them of their everyday uh everyday struggles right their everyday struggles are not with the muslim who's living down the street their everyday struggles are are more to do with the fact that they're not able to get you know uh, civic amenities that they should be deserving as taxpayers um that if they if their if their family member falls ill then the government hospital is is not functioning as as well as it should be to be able to take care of your family member so these are more day to day issues um you know not the fact that there is there is a there is a, a temple somewhere that has to be reconstructed or there is a there is a mosque that has to be demolished because we need to reclaim the temple underneath uh, right so that's not your day to day and i think these elections have reminded um, you know the BJP as well that that we're we're focused on our day to day. You deliver our day to day first, right? We're okay with the Ram Temple being built and that's being built and that's great, but we need you to focus on our day to day. So I think one strategy has to be that it has to be going back to the basics. The other strategy, Venkat, has to be also somewhere, uh, you know, making all of these lofty sounding ideals. Be it you know, be it the idea of secularism, um, you know, be it the idea of sort of uh, the, the fact that we are living in in this this sort of republic where we need a sense of um, you know fe- federal cooperatism, right? We we need different states to pull together. All of these are very lofty sounding ideas that are thrown in by the liberals and by the opposition sometimes. But I think we need to remind people of just why they matter to them in their lives and how they're connected to their struggles. So the fact is, uh, secularism matters to you, if you, especially more so if you're a street vendor on the street trying to make a business out of selling eatables or, or, or clothes or anything, right? Because if there is communal disharmony, um, the first thing that will happen is, is that there will be a, a mob that will land up on the street uh, and your business will either be attacked or it'll be shut down till there is peace, right? Um, the fact is that when there is communal disharmony, you will see that people will stop 
patronizing businesses, people will stop going out. There will be a sense of unease. So I think I think it's about also breaking down some of these 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 sort of macro mm -hmm. narratives and and telling people why it's relevant to their lives. Uh, it is relevant to their lives because they're deeply connected to their well-beings. It's it's not just a lofty ideal that is enshrined in the constitution. Uh, it's not just something that you know liberals should be discussing in their living rooms. It has to be something that has to be understood by people on the ground. And I think that is where the work has to begin. Um, you know, so so there has to be much more work in being able to break down, which is what we saw with the elections, uh, but in a limited space with the constitution, right? Um, we 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 made people understood. I mean, you know, the campaign made people understood how important the constitution was for their everyday well-being. And I think that has to be done with the ideas of, of you know, equality, with the ideas of secularism that has to be followed with all of these ideas as well. Um, and, you know, reclaiming narratives that are close to you. Uh, so, you know, the values that people believe in, the, 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 the personalities that people believe in, be it Gandhi, be it Nehru, be it anybody else. But, you know, stand up and, and, and remind people of, of who these people were. Um, stand up and remind people of of the values of secularism, uh, of of peace, of harmony, of of you know of shunning communalism. So I think all of that has to happen in 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 the years to come because, as I said, communalism is not going to vanish overnight. Uh, people will have to step up. People will have to yeah. take the effort to drive it away. And I think I think journalists, artists, and civil society will have to take the lead in this. Yes. So you brought in three things. One, you said that day-to-day uh, -day issues matter. So keep that keep that narrative discussion going on, unemployment, inflation, all these matters. So we should, that's one. The second one is the preamble constitution has lofty ideas. Sometimes we we are not always communicating what it means on a day-to-day -day secularism, yeah. social justice. What does it mean on a day-to-day -day level? What does it mean to the person working in your house, working in your factory, etc. right? So keep translating that and also reclaim those spaces and people who seem to be whether it's Nehru or Gandhi or Ambedkar or Jyoti Bafule, all of those Absolutely. icons who have been a part of our history and narrative reclaim them back because that brings in brings in uh, ability to counter this uh, and you speak about art and culture uh, I, I remember in one of your discussions in BIC you asked people who are not necessarily vocal about what they think is going wrong, but can become silent uh, supporters of art projects, of books, of discussions, and open their houses, open this discussion. I, I, I thought that was a fascinating nudge, if I could say, to what look, people I mean, can do about this. Yeah, I mean, look, Venkat, I mean, I am very, very clear about the fact that I, you know, when I go and travel and I meet victims of hate crime and victims of communal hate, what hurts them a lot is is not the fact that you know the act of violence was done against them i mean of course you know that that is that is brutal that is gruesome but i think what sometimes hurts slightly more than that or pinches slightly more in a different way is the fact that you know people who didn't necessarily endorse that act just stood by and watched silently right they let the perpetrators come do what they had to and and they didn't flinch a bit uh, and here I mean it's it's the majority community which has to take the responsibility up, uh, you know, because to expect the minorities who are being attacked to to come and speak out against against those attacks is, I think, I think unfair because they are already vulnerable. They're already in a space where they feel cornered by this this absolute ecosystem of hate that has been created. But you know, but what stops people from the majority community to come out and say, "Hang on, that's." That's you know you can't do this in my name. You can't do this in the name of my religion. Um, and I think I think we need to see that a lot more. We need to see well-meaning Hindus. We need to see people who who believe in 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 you know the the values that Hinduism carries uh, to come out and say that that is not my religion, right? That is that might be a very twisted, convoluted, politicized form of what you what you think my religion is, but that is not my religion. So the mob doesn't speak for me. Um, you know, I, I, I sort of, I like to think of it this way and I like to break it down to people in this way, which is that think of it as, as, you know, as you and your sibling living in a house with an abusive parent, right? The abusive parent is not abusive towards you necessarily. Uh, 
uh, he's 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 trying to he's trying to you know sort of uh, give you everything that you need. He he's going to give you a toffee. He's going he's going to give you a chocolate bar, a sweet, a, a nice dress sometimes. But you can see that the that the parent is abusive towards your sibling. The question is, will you will you speak up against the parent and say, hang on, you're trying to you know you're trying to be nice to me, but I know what you're doing with my sibling. Or are you just going to silently sit back and say, hey, you know, life is good for me. I think the sibling is on their own, right? That is the choice that the country and that the, the majority community in India, the Hindus have in front of them. Uh, what do they choose is, 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 is going to define a lot of how the Hindutva project also plays out. Yeah, I, I like the analogy because somehow the right wing is also trying to make sure that they don't look, we don't look like siblings, right? So we are making them the outsider. So uh, if we can make sure that we can build projects which brings us together, which is secularism, social justice, and various ways, then it's easy to see them as siblings. And the next thing to do will be to go back and say, how can I be ha just be happy that one of my co-countrymen, co-citizen, is not being provided all the facilities? He's struggling or she's struggling. What do I react to it? How do I react to it? And I think yeah. the, the election uh, from our discussion uh, to say there is, it has given us some hope and relief, but there is a re quick realization that this project is not over. And this project requires us to battle it. If there is a day-to-day -day hate project, there has to be a counter to it and a nurturing at a day-to-day -day level of the constitutional values. Yeah. And that needs to be done by each of us standing up. Absolutely. And I'll take that example that these are our siblings, these are co-citizens for whom we need to stand up. And this election should give us enough um, courage that we can do it and we can we can stand for 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 this idea of India right Absolutely. so I, I think that's how I took what you said I also wanted to end with asking you the voters uh, have voted what do you want them to do over the next five years ten years I think I think I want them to realize that democracy lies in in accountability right I want them to realize that democracy true democracy is is being able to and and actually doing the act of questioning your government to holding them responsible for your well-being right i want them to realize that questioning is good i want them to realize that a media that criticizes and that questions is is ultimately the media that is going to deliver um, you know the goods of 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 a democracy to you right because otherwise if the media stops questioning that the government has a free hand and and it doesn't matter which which regime is in power? I think I think there are certain principles that people have to remember, no matter who's in power. And it is the fact that um, you know now we're seeing the beauty of a coalition government already, right? Sometimes because if you see, especially how this this whole um, you know the paper leaks have played out, it started off with you know with the with the education minister Dharmendra Pradhan brazening it out or wanting to brazen it out by saying that you know none of this has happened. And then slowly, as the media uh, continuously kept reporting on it and kept highlighting issues of irregularities, he had to change his tune from saying, okay, now we'll look into it and see whether there are irregularities, to actually making the whole journey and saying, I'm sorry, it is my moral responsibility that we've, that we've not been able to deliver, right? So that is the beauty of, of a well-functioning democracy that you hold people in power accountable and responsible for their actions or their or their omissions uh, and i hope that people realize that that is what is going to make their lives better it's it's not empty rhetoric it's not promises of of building a temple or a mosque it is the fact that when you hold a government accountable it is under that much more pressure to deliver what they promised to you and to make your life better so I hope that people remember this in the next five, ten years, or 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 till eternity. To be honest, lovely. Thank you so much. I, I think it's a uh, as always very very comforting to talk to you. Although you give us things to worry about, but you place it down very very well. It's easy to understand that this is not a project um, which will end right now. We need to work towards it. And you you have highlighted what the citizen voters, uh, civil society must do and act. So thank you again. Uh, thank you to all the viewers who've been watching us in Edina. As again, do support us, but also support all the independent media houses, which have been doing a fabulous job. Support them, not just by subscribing, but also financially. So thank you again. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.
ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ವೆಂಕಟ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಮತ್ತಷ್ಟು ವಿಶೇಷ ವಿಡಿಯೋಗಳನ್ನು ನೋಡಲು ಮತ್ತು ಹೊಸ ವಿಡಿಯೋಗಳ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ತಿಳಿಯಲು ಈ ದಿನ ಡಾಟ್ ಕಾಮ್ ಯೂಟ್ಯೂಬ್ ಚಾನೆಲ್ ಸಬ್ಸ್ಕ್ರೈಬ್